Hey, script supervisor, what's up, is your culture detective here investigating your favorite albums, and today I'm going to be doing the second review of the day. My first review is in Cantonese, so you won't be seeing it in this channel. Bye bye! But uh, yeah, today I'm going to be doing an album review on the new Shu Shu album, Ignore Grief. So yeah, long running indie duo. I mean, they could be making pop. They could be making industrial music. They could be making ambient music. You never know. Every time they release a new album, it's like a, it's like a gotcha game. You never know what you're gonna get. Uh, but essentially, uh, Jamie Stewart and Angela Saw are back with a new album, and I've covered Shu Shu's work since I started this channel six years ago, and they have always been um, one of the most interesting musical acts. Of the last two decades because the music they make are so weird and off the walls and at the fringes of, of the world of music it's really interesting of course we have uh their 2017 album forget which is a beautifully haunting and disturbing art pop album in 2016 their rendition of the twin Peaks soundtrack is brilliant ingenious and very flavorful in 2019 they released Girl with Basket of Fruit, which is uh, their random turn into extremely loud, harsh, droney, noisy, post-industrial insanity. We have some of the most horrifying, soul-crushing, mind-splitting, hearts plucking out of my chest, intestines bursting, horrifying music I've heard. Like, I salute Chushu for being able to make music so fucking scary. Um, I was taken back when I first listened to this album, but honestly, I am very impressed that they're able to pull something off like this, and I somehow enjoyed it because of that. And also in 2020, or I think, yeah, in 2020, they released Oh No, which is a very nice, warm, hearty, chill album with a bit of indie pop here and there but of course following that we have uh ignore grief and given the album cover given that it's in black you know you're in for some disturbing fucked up shit and uh that's what we got on this album this is basically girl with basket of fruit part two this is the sequel to girl with basket of fruit and girl with basket of fruit is more you know hectic frantic electronic schizophrenic madness ignore grief on the other hand is like limbo death pure dread yeah you know that mr incredibles meme where it it slowly gets darker and more messed up we're pretty much at the second last or even the last image in that lineup we are in that sort of territory here of course, every time I start filming, my roommate has to, like, throw a party outside. I love, I love, 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 love what I'm doing. So anyways, the album opener, the real chaos, cha-cha-cha, starts off with crushing, distorted noise, flinging metallic tones, muffled, helpless spoken word with lyrics that allude to domestic abuse. It's really scary, and I don't want to listen to it ever again. And the second track is 666 Photos of Nothing, and... I swear to God, this is some of the best horror music I've ever listened to, full stop. It's This this song is straight out of a horror film, 100 times more horrifying and artsy than A24 horror films. The detuned accordions on this track sounds like a 90-year-old nun possessed by Belial the demon in an abandoned church in the middle of the night in the middle of nowhere in Midwest USA or something. And... Yeah, and then we are hit with the intimate, breathy, echoey vocals by Jamie Stewart. It is demented. And yeah, it's not a catchy song at all. It's the opposite of that. But I'm impressed with what the hell they have conjured up with this track. I also kind of like the next track, Escarita, Little Richard, with the speedy, repetitive, clanging tambourines and pumping beats. This track would easily fit into Girl with a Basket of Fruit, and I like that. Also, I'm trying my best to describe these sounds and tones. I have, like, 90% of the time while listening to this album, I don't know what's making this sound. So I'm just describing it with my best effort. Maybe Baby 
is a track about smashing a spider, a tarantula to be specific. And we have these very disgusting sounds of a cabbage being stabbed. I think it's a cabbage or a lettuce. Um, but yeah, it sounds like a, a human being getting stabbed. And you hit a bone, like a cartilage maybe, and it's just constantly. And then these clanging construction noises. And then these rubbery, echoey, and shaky percussions. It's crazy. And then we have tarsier, 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 tarsier. By the way, if you're curious what a tarsier is, it's a type of monkey. But yeah, this is a dark, moody, dreary, spacey ballad with reverby vocals. It sounds like it came out of the most depressing film noir ever. I feel like I'm lost in limbo while I'm listening to this track. That is followed with Pahrump, which is another ambient, droney spoken word piece with ringing chimes and deranged saxophones. Border Factory takes more of an industrial turn with its repetitive, bouncy coil noises and what I think is a washing machine rumbling. It's either that or a fucking cremating furnace with ashes of dead souls and burnt up violently assassinated war criminals in wooden mahogany coffins or some shit like that it's like a haunted hardware store the worst home depot in the world next track Dracu dracula parrot moon moth has the weepy violas and string sounds demented keyboards and triangles this track reminds me of the music room myth so apparently in japan there's an urban legend where at schools at high schools on some days in the middle of the night if you go into the music room um, the instruments will start playing itself. This is the type of music that I would imagine that the music room is playing. And then we have Brother Creeper with a Nine Inch Nails-esque beat. And the lyrics about poison apples and scalp knives. It's quirky and it's oddball. And the album ends off with 4M, which is an 8 minute long musical torture. Constant organ tone. That is not even droney. It's just there crushing piano sounds it sounds like 50 piano keys are hit all at once reverby ascending tones like an inhuman demonic creature is climbing up from the bottom of my bed to eat me alive limb to limb yeah it's a trip it really is a trip and um yeah i don't know this is definitely like at least i love scary albums by the way like i i listen to swans and daughters a lot and i listen to them whenever i feel like it whenever i'm in the mood but this is something else this is next level this is horror film soundtrack like i would love it if i could hear shushu score a horror film like i think that is that would be amazing but for this album i really wouldn't come back to this album anymore i haven't heard a an album scarier than this one honestly and albums shouldn't be scary it's just music and music doesn't scare me usually like 99.999 percent .99 chance of the time so at least i respect shushu for being able to make something that sounds like this so yeah i guess I'm, if i have to give a score i guess it's a six out of ten i don't even know like if you like and subscribe if you want more thanks for watching bye bye